So reading from the New York Times today, okay? In regards to the bomb that was smuggled into the Tehran guest house months ago, killed the Hamas leader. Okay? It's not okay, is it? So I read that again. Bomb that was smuggled into Tehran guest house months ago is responsible for killing the Hamas leader. Okay? There is a photograph, and I'm reading this from the New York Times, so again, y'all can go over to New York Times and read this. There is a photograph circulating on Telegram and among Iranian officials on Wednesday, and it shows a damaged building in northern Tehran. Okay? And this photograph was taken and provided directly to the New York Times. I'm going to show it to you, okay? Now, automatically when I saw this, my point of reference, family, is um, when there was, the, in the 1980s, there was the bombing of a hotel in Brighton by the IRA, and that was during Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher's presidency in the UK. This happened in the 80s, and they had that same kind of image. Um, I forget the name of the hotel, but they had that same kind of image where, you know, like the hotel had been affected by the bomb and half of the hotels had been blown, just blown away. It was, it was bizarre. You know, as a kid, when you see these things, and this is why you have to think about these children in, um, in Palestine, what they're seeing, you know, seeing these types of images and you know these images they go to the heart you know they, they, you feel it i'll show you the picture one more time and then i'll continue just reading the article okay so it looks like an apartment building residential and it looks as if it was split into condos and uh, because I don't think the whole thing is a guest house, it's probably split into different levels, different guest house, maybe one per floor or, you know, whatever per floor, so on and so forth. And you can see basically where that, that black tarpin is, the, the tarp, what do you call it, tarpin, tarpaulin, whatever you call it, this. That, that whole bit there, all of that that building that was constructed that whole side the whole corner is tear off that tell you about the impact of the blast you know terrible so apparently the bomb was smuggled into the guest house months ago an explosive device hidden in a heavily guarded complex where Ismail Hyena was known to stay in Iran was what killed him according to the according to the times new york times investigation so he always stayed there you know he he always stayed there so it was known that was the place that he would go stay at um i can play the article shall i play it let's play it Listen. Bomb smuggled into Tehran guest house months ago killed Hamas leader. This article is by Ronan Bergman, Mark Mazzetti, and Fernaz Fassihi, and read by an automated voice. Ismail Hania, a top leader of Hamas, was assassinated on Wednesday by an explosive device covertly smuggled into the Tehran guest house where he was staying, according to seven Middle Eastern officials, including two Iranians and an American official. Excuse me, just a second, just a second. Okay. The bomb had been hidden approximately two months ago in the guest house, according to five of the Middle Eastern officials. The guest house is run and protected by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps and is part of a large compound known as Nashat in an upscale neighborhood of northern Tehran. Mr. Hania was in Iran's capital for the presidential inauguration. The bomb was detonated remotely, the five officials said, once it was confirmed that he was inside his room at the guest house. 
The blast also killed a bodyguard. The explosion shook the building, shattered some windows, and caused the partial collapse of an exterior wall. According to the two Iranian officials, members of the Revolutionary Guards briefed on the incident. Such damage was also evident in a photograph of the building shared with the New York Times. Mr. Hania, who had led Hamas's political office in Qatar, had stayed at the guest house several times when visiting Tehran, according to the Middle Eastern officials. All of the officials spoke on the condition of anonymity to share sensitive details about the assassination. Iranian officials and Hamas said Wednesday that Israel was responsible for the assassination, an assessment also reached by several U.S. officials who requested anonymity. The assassination threatened to unleash another wave of violence in the Middle East and upend the ongoing negotiations to end the war in Gaza. Mr. Hania had been a top negotiator in the ceasefire talks. Israel has not publicly acknowledged responsibility for the killing, but Israeli intelligence officials briefed the United States and other Western governments on the details of the operation in the immediate aftermath, according to the five Middle Eastern officials. On Wednesday, Secretary of State Antony J. Blinken said that the United States had received no advance knowledge of the assassination plot. In the hours after the killing, speculation immediately focused on the possibility that Israel had killed Mr. Hania with a missile strike, possibly fired from a drone or a plane, similar to how Israel had launched a missile on a military base in Isfahan in April. That missile theory raised questions about how Israel might have been able to evade Iranian air defense systems, again, to execute such a brazen airstrike in the capital. As it turns out, the assassins were able to exploit a different kind of gap in Iran's defenses, a lapse in the security of a supposedly tightly guarded compound that allowed a bomb to be planted and to remain hidden for many weeks before it would eventually be triggered. Such a breach, three Iranian officials said, was a catastrophic failure of intelligence and security for Iran and a tremendous embarrassment for the guards, which uses the compound for retreats, secret meetings, and housing prominent guests like Mr. Hania. How the bomb was stashed in the guest house remained unclear. The Middle Eastern officials said that the planning for the assassination took months and required extensive surveillance of the compound. The two Iranian officials who described the nature of the assassination said they did not know how or when the explosives were planted in the room. Israel decided to carry out the assassination outside Qatar, where Mr. Hania and other senior members of Hamas's political leadership live. The Qatari government has been mediating the negotiations between Israel and Hamas over a ceasefire in Gaza. The deadly blast early Wednesday shattered windows and collapsed a portion of the wall of the compound, photographs showed and the Iranian officials said. It appeared to do minimal damage beyond the building itself, as a missile probably would have done. At around 2 a.m. local time, the device exploded, according to the Middle Eastern officials, including the Iranians, Startled building staff members, the official said, ran to find the source of the tremendous noise, leading them to the room where Mr. Hania was staying with a bodyguard. The compound is staffed with a medical team, which rushed to the room immediately after the explosion. The team declared that Mr. Hania had died immediately. The team tried to revive the bodyguard, but he too was dead. The leader of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Ziad al Nakala, was staying next door, two of the Iranian officials said. His room was not badly damaged, suggesting precise planning in the targeting of Mr. Hania. Khalil al haya the deputy commander of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, who was also in Tehran, arrived at the scene and saw his colleague's body, according to the five Middle Eastern officials. Among the people immediately notified, said the three Iranian officials, was General Ismail Ghani, the commander-in-chief of the Quds Force, the overseas arm of the Revolutionary Guards, which works closely with Iranian allies in the region, including Hamas and Hezbollah. He notified Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, in the middle of the night, waking him up, the official said. Four hours after the blast, the Revolutionary Guards issued a statement that Mr. Hania had been killed. By 7 a.m., Mr. Khamenei had summoned the members of Iran's Supreme National Security Council to his compound for an emergency meeting, at which he issued an order to strike Israel in retaliation, according to the three Iranian officials. 
Tehran had already been under heightened security because of the inauguration of Iran's new president, Masoud Pazeshkian, with senior government officials, military commanders, and dignitaries from 86 countries gathering at parliament in central Tehran for the ceremony. Mr. Hania had looked cheerful and triumphant on Tuesday during the swearing-in, hugging the new president after he delivered his inaugural speech, and the two men raised their hands together, making the victory sign. In Iran, the method of assassination was the subject of rumor and dispute. The Tasnim News Agency, the media outlet for the guards, reported that witnesses said an object like a missile had hit the window of Mr. Hania's room and exploded. But the two Iranian officials, the members of the guards briefed on the attack, confirmed that the explosion had taken place inside Mr. Hania's room and said that an initial investigation showed that the explosives had been placed there sometime in advance. They described the attack's precision and sophistication as similar in tactic to the remote-controlled AI robot weapon that Israel used to assassinate Iran's top nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh in 2020. Israeli assassination operations outside of the country are primarily carried out by Mossad, the country's foreign intelligence service. David Bernaya, the head of Mossad, said in January that his service was obliged to hunt down the leaders of Hamas the group behind the October 7th attacks in Israel. It will take time, as it took after the massacre in Munich, but our hands will catch them wherever they are, Mr. Bernaya said, referring to the killing of Israeli athletes by terrorists at the 1972 Olympics. So, so, it sounds as if from this article, um, and I don't know if the article is accurate, okay? But it sounds as if, well, number one, the bomb managed to get past all of those security people and so on and so forth and get into his suite. But not only that, it seems as if the, the device was in his room, in his actual room, his bedroom. And as the article suggested, it does sound as if it was some kind of remote AI, remote control um, device. I don't know, maybe I'm a bit slow or something like that, but yeah, it, it does sound as if it was. And then, of course, the article had, had said that. Of course, it would be controlled via remote control, but And then why didn't he leave? He was there, the, this happened the day after the inauguration. Why didn't he leave? Or was he gonna leave in the evening or something like that? Why there, why? Because it was in two o'clock, I was gonna say, excuse me. But it was two o'clock, right? Two something PM. So was he on his way, you know, was he going to leave and go back to Qatar? Or was he gonna stay a few more days or whatever? Why, why did he stay? And why stay at the same place all the time? These are just, you know, logistical questions that I'm just asking, you know. I'm not, um, I'm not forming an opinion one way or another. I'm just saying, logistically, somebody like him, super sensitive and high profile, and they managed to get their device through all of their layers of security. I suppose this is the world of intelligence, sweethearts. There seems to be a partnership. There seems to be a a, 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 a partnership. A, seems to be like a joint effort, you know. 
let me leave it there you can go over to the new york times i've just played the audio because i thought it would probably better be better than me just you know talking but um again i'll just say the same message i said yesterday this is absolutely terrible they woke up the ayatollah from his sleep and gave him the news and it's still kind of informal or unofficial whether he actually has said you know um, Ayatollah Khomeini whether he's actually said yes we're going to retaliate because you know people didn't want to go on record saying that but it looked like the New York Times have the New York New York Times they have their links of course they have their people they have their people on the ground so this is legit information but but you know is it true you know they say news is northeast west and south it's like to point us in any kind of direction of the compass you know just point and tell us which way to look and all this type of thing so which way are we being pointed in <laughs> do you know what i mean and you heard what Israel said, you heard what the, the top guy from Mossad said, anywhere our hand, and that is just so, it's in the Old Testament, in their Torah, isn't it? Anywhere my hand reach, it's that. If my hand can reach there, I think it's in the book of Nehemiah, there's a, um, I don't know if there's an equivalent in, in, um, I don't know if there's an equivalent story in Islam, but the story of Nehemiah in the Old Testament, and it's uh, from the Torah, tells you about this guy called Nehemiah who was building this wall. And people laughed at him and said, you can't build the wall, da, 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 da. Um, you're, you're not fit for the work or whatever, because Nehemiah had some quirks about him. So Nehemiah prayed because people were mocking him, and he said, God strengthen my hand. Don't let them mock me. God strengthened my hand. And with that, God gave Nehemiah all the intelligence and the spiritual downloads and the assistants who were compliant to help build this wall. And so that's what I thought of when the, the Mossad, Mossad guy said, This is what we're going to do. This is our mandate. They don't exactly, <laughs> they don't hold back, do they? But this is not a great situation. And again, what we need is peace. What we need is peace. Especially because the West has such flaky leadership in terms of the UK. You see what's going on in the, in the USA. Who is, who is the competent leader that's leading the USA right now? Who, who is that person? And who is that person going to become November? Because that's the person that's going to be engaged in all of this. The back and forth, the deliberation, the negotiations, the looking at things in depth and so on and so forth. And this lady that they got over there, this lady here, she ain't up to it. So it's real, real crazy. And at the same time, we've got, uh, we've got, it's crazy. We've got USA thinking that they could take on China. <laughs> we've got Ukraine thinking that they can deal with Russia. Crazy. Go to the New York Times and have a look at, um, at um, the article. And uh, it's all really, really unfortunate. That's all I can say. And just peace. When are we going to have peace?